Have you ever wondered what's happening inside your head right now? As you read these words, your brain is transforming symbols into thoughts and emotions. It's a kind of magic, effortlessly understanding stories, jokes, or poetry, all thanks to language. This ability feels natural, but it's one of the most complex feats your brain performs. You can invent new sentences, talk about the past or future, or imagine things that don't exist. Language lets us share abstract ideas and emotions, forming the foundation of our societies, art, and relationships. But how does it work? How do sound waves become meaningful thoughts? How do we craft a reply or apology? We're not just decoding signals, we're building worlds with words, connecting across time and space. In this journey, we'll explore the brain's language centers and how they work together to create and understand language. It's a story about science and about us, turning solitary thoughts into a shared human experience. So let's begin this amazing journey together. Now that we've marveled at the magic, let's give it a name, neurolinguistics. Neuro means brain, linguistics means language. So neurolinguistics is the study of how our brains make language possible. Neurolinguists are brain detectives asking questions like, where is language stored? How do children learn it so quickly? What's different in a bilingual brain? They use tools like fMRI and EEG and study people with brain injuries to piece together the puzzle. Neurolinguistics covers everything from how babies learn to talk to what happens when language breaks down after injury or disease. It even explores how we process sign language and written words. Ultimately, neurolinguistics aims to map the intricate network that lets us speak, read, and understand. It's like uncovering the blueprint of a city, seeing not just the landmarks but the connections that make it all work. To handle language, your brain relies on a specialized team of regions, mostly in the left hemisphere. The motor cortex controls the muscles needed for speech, lips, tongue, jaw, and vocal cords, turning thoughts into spoken words. The angular gyrus and supramarginal gyrus act as multimedia hubs, linking what we see and hear with meaning, crucial for reading and writing. The angular gyrus, for example, lets you see the word cat and instantly picture a furry animal. None of these areas work alone. They're connected by the arcuate fasciculus, a bundle of nerve fibers that acts like a high-speed data cable. This pathway links the parts of your brain that understand language with those that produce it. The result? You can understand a question and reply almost instantly. This team, production, comprehension, movement, and communication, powers our linguistic lives. It's a seamless collaboration that makes language feel effortless. Two regions are the superstars of language, Broca's area and Wernicke's area. Broca's area, in the left frontal lobe, is the speech director. It turns thoughts into grammatical sentences and coordinates with the motor cortex to produce speech. It's responsible for grammar, word order, and even helps with sign language and understanding complex sentences. Wernicke's area, in the left temporal lobe, is the comprehension department. It processes the sounds of speech and matches them with meaning. When you hear words, Wernicke's area deciphers them, accessing your mental dictionary. It helps you understand not just single words, but entire sentences and conversations. Broca's and Wernicke's areas constantly communicate, forming the core duo of our language system. One handles speaking, the other understanding, making conversation possible. Their discovery was a turning point in neuroscience. Together, they reveal how our brains turn thoughts into words and words into meaning. Let's follow a sentence as it travels into your mind. When someone says, look at that fluffy ginger cat, sound waves enter your ears and become electrical signals. These signals reach your auditory cortex, which registers the raw sounds. Wernicke's area then breaks the sounds into speech units and matches them to words in your mental dictionary. Next, your brain figures out how the words fit together. Broca's area helps analyze the grammar and structure. The angular gyrus might even conjure a mental image of a cat. All this information is integrated with context and your own knowledge. You don't just understand the words, you grasp the speaker's intention. This entire process happens in less than a blink, allowing real-time conversation. It's a seamless, lightning-fast miracle you never have to think about. Much of what we know about language in the brain comes from cases where it breaks down, aphasias. In the 1860s, 
Paul Broca studied a patient called Tan, who could only say that one syllable, though he understood everything. After Tan's death, Broca found damage in the left frontal lobe, linking speech production to a specific brain area. This became known as Broca's aphasia. Speech is slow and halting, but understanding remains. Later, Carl Wernicke found patients who spoke fluently but made no sense and couldn't understand language. Their damage was in the left temporal lobe, Wernicke's area, showing comprehension is handled separately. These discoveries revolutionized neuroscience, proving language is made of distinct components processed in different regions. The idea of localization of function became a cornerstone of brain science. By studying what goes wrong, we learned how the healthy system works. These stories mapped the brain's language network. They showed that language is not a single skill, but a symphony of specialized processes. And they revealed just how intricate and fragile our most human faculty can be. Bilingual brains are a fascinating subject for neurolinguists. Far from causing confusion, speaking two languages creates a flexible, integrated network. When bilinguals speak, both languages are active, so the brain must constantly select the right one and suppress the other. This mental workout strengthens executive control, skills like problem solving and switching tasks. Studies show bilinguals often excel at these tasks and may even delay dementia symptoms. How languages are stored depends on when they're learned. Early bilinguals have overlapping brain areas, while later learners may use adjacent regions. The bilingual brain is a testament to neuroplasticity, our brain's ability to adapt. It's a powerful example of how experience shapes our neural hardware. Neurolinguistics isn't just academic, it has real-world impact. In medicine, it helps diagnose and treat language disorders after strokes or injuries and guide surgeons to avoid language centers during brain surgery. Speech therapists use this knowledge to tailor rehabilitation for specific deficits. In education, understanding brain processes helps develop better strategies for teaching reading, writing, and second languages. It informs interventions for disorders like dyslexia, giving struggling readers a better chance. Even technology benefits AI voice assistants and translation tools are built on models of human language processing. The more we learn about our brains, the better we can design tools to help us communicate. Neurolinguistics bridges science, health, education, and technology, improving lives every day. We've reached the end of our journey inside the brain. Language is a biological masterpiece, a collaboration between specialized brain regions working in harmony. Every conversation, story, or sign you read is powered by this intricate system. Neurolinguistics isn't just about mapping the brain, it's about understanding what makes us human. Language connects our inner worlds, builds culture, and lets us share our stories. Be amazed by your own brain, the tireless storyteller behind every word. Every sentence you speak is a testament to billions of neurons working together, and the story of language and our understanding of it is still being written.